Hello, my name is Gary Shotton, and I'm here as a part of Inspiring Better Business. And we hope that these lessons are helpful to you. We believe that we're speaking things that are truthful in any culture, any language, over any time period. We're not talking about just being successful if you leave, live in a developed nation. We're talking about the laws that will work anywhere. And as a part of our program, we actually initiate calls to small groups of business people, men and women, in developing nations. Happens to be primarily East Africa at this point, but we're expanding to other places. We do help people locally also, but that's where we ask these people in these groups to respond to us with some real questions. And we feel like those real questions are probably being asked by others. And so one of those questions was hiring and firing employees. How do we deal with that? That's a legitimate question. If you're going to have employees, you want to be able to do that. And I have experience, some, some of it really firsthand. My first business that I really owned started with just myself and a helper, and then over time we added trucks. It was a trucking business. It was moving furniture. And we kept track of not only the person's name, like Bob Smith and Bill Jones, but we also was easier if we named them employee number one, two, three, and up there. So over a period of 17 years, we were up to over 800 different numbers. Numbers. We didn't have 800 people at once. We had between uh, small but up to many times 75 people at once. But that's how many people we hired and they aren't with us anymore. My current customer uh, co company that I own, we maintain about uh, 60 to 65 employees and there's some come and go. We have some that are very long term employees and uh, one that's 30 years, several that are 20 years and several that are many that are 10 years with us. So we're trying to improve on this as well. How do we hire the right people though? We're hiring now. And so one of the obvious is, number one, the better you hire, the less you have to fire. That's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. So let's concentrate mostly on the hiring process and be sure that we're uh, doing the best we can there. Well, in our society, we have what's called a resume, and we have a lot of paper. But uh, you know, people can put things on a resume, resume that they put it and say, well, this is what I think they want to hear from me, so I'm going to put that down, whether it's actually true or not. And, you know, there gives some, some information. I tend to lean more towards the first discussion with a person. And in discussing with that person, there's certain red flags that we watch for if there's a, they come to us and say, well, and then we say, well, why are you looking for a job? And they say, well, my last boss, he was just a jerk. Hey, everything he did was wrong. And yada, 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 yada. Guess what? When he leaves my place, he's going to say the same thing about me. Count on it. And so you want to be sensitive, uh, not just what's on paper, but, but can you take a look into this person uh, and how they actually work. Are they going to be committed not to you personally, but are they going to be committed to the job that you've asked them to do? Are they going to be uh, an asset that's going to well exceed the amount of money that you're paying them and they're going to be revenue, bring revenue to your company? Uh, I suggest that you hire slowly. And what do I mean by that? Uh, occasionally we'll be talking to somebody and they just started their business and we find out right away they hired five or six people. Well, there's five or six people that need a job, but you don't need them. You don't need a lot of people in those first businesses. Now, after you're up and running and I bought a business with 41 employees, of course, I need that many people. But if you're just getting started, I had one person that was telling me they, uh, they already hired him a bookkeeper and then they are a manager of operations. Hold it just a second. You don't have any business yet, so don't hire anybody until you have the ability to pay them the foreseeable. And you might have to wear a lot of different hats, do a lot of different things yourself, and then that first person you hire, you're probably going to have to ask them to take on a lot of different responsibilities. And if they're just hiring on for one job and that's all they can do, maybe that's not the best person to hire. And then when you're hiring somebody, Try to get a look, look into their work ethics. Are they uh, uh, compatible? Is their personality compatible with you? Their skill sets is one thing, but are they functioning well inside your company? You're going to really need to know that as soon as possible. So you can do things like, hey, I just need a job. We might work into a long-time, full-time job, but I need to just hire you part-time. 
or for just a couple weeks. We, we refer to our friend Wendy in Morogoro, uh, Tanzania, where she had uh, tasty crispy chicken, and she was selling this in the college that she was going to, and she didn't really need much help but for a couple hours while it was busy, and she could do the rest of the work herself. That's all she needed. Well, guess what? When she hires somebody for a couple hours part-time, if that person doesn't work out, it's pretty easy to let them go. Now, once you hire somebody and ask them to leave their good-paying job and they work for you, uh, that you ought to be a little more careful. So be, get as good a look at them to see how they're going to work in your environment and, and do that slowly. And add people slow, slowly. Uh, earlier on you can tell, uh, do you work well together? And are they, uh, are they alert? Are they on board? Are they thinking well? Uh, sometimes you want to hire and think of hiring the person with the most experience, okay? We happen to have a machine shop, and so, of course, if we can hire somebody that fits our personality that also has uh, skill sets as a machinist, we're interested. But we can't always find those people, so in a way, we're looking for that personality first. And when we see somebody's teachable and they're alert, then we're more inclined to hire them and train them from day one. You get the advantage of training them like the way you want it done. Now we look real quick. Are they got a notepad? We suggest bring a notepad. Are they asking the same question over and over, which you covered last yesterday? Are they asking you the same question again? They're not. You're not a good fit with you. Uh, and then many times you have a chance to train them. Uh, ideally, you have the ability to give a, a, a clear description of what you want them to do and a clear description of, of ability to judge that. Uh, in our case, you need to do these parts within a particular time period. Well, you can kind of make a judgment there. And so if you can tell that, great. But early on, a lot of times, you're not able to do that because they're doing so many things. I would say be very careful about hiring friends and family. That's not always a good fit. You don't hire somebody because they need a job. You've got to hire somebody because they're going to do the job that you need them to do. And you can add a whole other layer. I'm not saying never do that, and I know there's a lot of family businesses, but, but that is not always the best go-to as friends and family but for obvious reasons. And so be careful. Hire the best you can. Uh, be careful. And now let's talk about firing somebody. Well, nobody wants to fire somebody. That's no one's likes to get fired. But you know, there's overriding of criteria is being fair but firm. And I'm going to give some real examples here. But um, ideally, you're fair in communicating what you expect them to do, and you're fair in communicating if they're not performing up to your standards. You should be letting them know. Um, they should not be surprised. They might act surprised, but they really shouldn't be surprised that they've been dismissed from employment. They probably saw it coming, and they, they would, again, could act surprised. So, but you've got to be fair and firm. Uh, there's going to be uh, uh, cases where uh, there just doesn't fit. And in my opinion, you don't need to have a long explanation. It's not the time to uh, tell them, well, back on this, you did this, and uh, uh, like a training time. It's probably just as simple to say, you know, I don't think it's working here. Uh, uh, it's just not working out. Uh, in the same way, I don't want them to tell me all of my mistakes. That's not a time for me to tell them, hey, there's a whole long list, laundry, laundry, laundry list of things you didn't like about them. Just let them go. It's gone. Get on with life. Now there's a couple cases I want to talk about in this process. It seems inevitably that one of your most important persons, the most key person, now has a discipline problem. Maybe they're not reporting to work on time, or maybe they didn't show up for work. And you really kind of need this person. It's really pretty important. So now you're creating what I would call a double standard. If Joe's really important to me, I'm going to be more lenient with them than I'm with somebody else that's not as important. Be careful with that. And uh, so maybe they don't realize it or not. They, they uh, could be playing a little game with you to see where can they push the button with you. How far can they get before you're going to take action? Again, fair and firm. Uh, we had this issues that somebody that you really need on the job um, uh, doesn't show up from work one day and didn't call ahead. No good excuse. And the next day they come in. 
well, a little trick, if you want to call it, that I've learned is that when they don't show up on time or they don't show up when scheduled, it gives you the latitude to not need them. So somebody doesn't come to work one day, they come the next day, totally appropriate to say, you know, you weren't here yesterday, I was able to fill that job, and frankly, I don't need you today, so why don't you go on home and come back tomorrow? You're playing this same game with them. They'll, they'll pick up pretty fast that uh, you're disciplining them in a way that you're telling them you ought to be here every day or at least call in or at least have a good excuse because you're counting on them being there to fulfill the orders. Or If you didn't need them, you wouldn't have them there. Well, I hope this helps you. I hope that you understand that we're here to help you in the business affairs and we're here to share things that we think are globally true and will stand the test of time. We call them God's laws of business and they're going to be similar all around the world. Thanks for being a part of Inspiring Better Business.